Good afternoon. Um, so I will talk about economic significance of products and diseases. And uh, what I will present is uh, joint work carried out by my institute, which is Natural Resources Institute Finland, and University of Reading and University of Newcastle. Uh, but before I start, I would like to mention that uh, you have uh, been distributed a questionnaire, one page questionnaire. So, and uh, some of you have already filled it, but if you haven't, please do so. And uh, after the session or after the, the, the day, uh, they, they will be collected. So, what we want to do with the, this questionnaire is to have your views and based on your experiences, uh, we want to ask uh, your views regarding products and diseases in pigs. So please fill in the questionnaire. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so as um, Professor Kuriak has also already mentioned, um, uh, products and diseases are quite um, uh, important, and they are important as, especially if you think about intensity of production. And uh, they have different impacts, and one of them is that they can have negative impact on profitability of a big farm, in, in addition to many, many other things. And <clears throat> what we have done in the beginning of uh, ProHealth project is that we have uh, uh, looked at uh, economic significance of different products and diseases. And uh, information about the cost of diseases is needed to in order to help uh, decisions regarding, for instance, uh, allocation of resources to prevent uh, production diseases and to treat them. So in this presentation, I will go through um, what we have found out regarding the costs of production diseases in pigs by using uh, selected uh, examples. And we have also uh, been carrying out meta-analysis regarding consumer willingness to pay for improved animal welfare. So products and diseases are also an animal welfare issue, so I will say briefly about that. So if, if you think about uh, economic impacts of, of animal diseases, well, they can have different types of impacts. Um, uh, probably the most important impacts are that they affect revenues and they cause extra costs. So for instance, um, Animals may die, um, their growth rates may be reduced, uh, carcass contaminations may increase, um, the, the fertility of sows might be reduced, and uh, because of that, um, losses in sales revenues and uh, production can take place. In addition, we need uh, labor, medicines, um, uh, maybe extra feed, uh, some other resources, sick pens, and many other resources in order to treat uh, sick animals or to prevent uh, uh, animal diseases from occurring. In some cases, there may also be um, some cost savings. For instance, if a sow or if a uh, piglet dies, then of course it doesn't consume as much, much feed as it, it would consume otherwise. Um, but maybe uh, cost savings um, are more relevant if you think about um, um, effects of preventive measures. In some cases, there might also be additional revenues. For instance, um, if you cannot sell a pig to a slaughterhouse uh, because of uh, medication and then it grows a little bit heavier, then the value of that animal might increase. But usually the main uh, effects of of products and diseases are related to first two items in the slide. And of course, uh, economic impacts and the incidence and the severity of costs and the severity of disease can vary case by case. So what we have done in this case is that we have uh, analyzed literature and previously published study, studies and tried to identify what they say about uh, cost of products and diseases at the farm level. And as I said, we have also carried out meta-analysis regarding consumer willingness to pay for improved animal welfare. However, in this presentation, I will mainly focus on farm level issues. And what 
kind of literature we have been reviewing is that uh, obviously it needs to be focused on um, relevant diseases, so in production diseases in this case. Also, uh, we have been selecting only literature that is for reporting economic impacts of diseases. So for instance, what are the costs of disease in terms of euros? And obviously it needs to be focusing on pigs. So we carry out the lit literature search and then explore, uh, review those abstracts that we have identified. And then based on that, we selected the most relevant ones. And then we analyzed them. And what I would like to say also that um, all the numerical results that I will present, they have been converted to euros in uh, 2014 terms. And in this slide, you can see uh, two types of bars. Uh, all the bars indicate the number of publications in each category that were reviewed. So altogether, we had uh, roughly about 120, 130 publications reporting uh, economic costs of production diseases at the farm level. And uh, red bars indicate uh, upper level categories. So we have uh, uh, generic studies not focusing on any specific disease. Then we have those focusing on respiratory diseases, those focusing on reproductive diseases, uh, publications focusing on locomotory, gastrointestinal, and other dis diseases or disorders. And then the gray or blue or light blue bars indicate the number of publications in each category. Um, so, so they indicate the number of publications by specific disorder. So if you look at, uh, in, look at individual diseases, um, there were quite, actually quite a nice number of publications, about 40 publications focusing on respiratory diseases. And my, my majority of them were focusing on mycoplasma, pneumonia, or porcine des, respiratory, respiratory, respiratory respiratory disease complex. Also actinobacillus pleuropneumonia was quite often studied. Um, and there were not so many studies reporting economic results on reproductive disorders. And then regarding gastrointestinal disorders, uh, there were studies fo focusing on mainly on post weaning diarrhea and elitis. And uh, locomotory, as a locomotory diseases, we consider lameness. And then in the other cat category, there were parasites and uh, tail biting related studies. So I will, next I will go through um, these categories or diseases, well actually categories one by one. Uh, there's quite a lot of numerical information uh, so, um, but anyway, you, based on this, you can get some idea, an overview, what is the important, importance of each disease at the farm level in terms of ec farm economy. Um, well, um, if you think about uh, studies estimating the costs of all production diseases, they are not really that kind of studies which would give you a good overview. But there are a couple of studies which focus on endemic diseases, which is not exactly the same th thing as a production disease. And uh, they, they suggest, well, results based on those suggest that uh, the cost of endemic diseases would be somewhere in the range of uh, 30 and 40 euros per pig. Um, for instance, there's one American study which is actually quite old already and uh, reporting 35 euros per pig year. And they say that, um, Pneumonia was accounting about one third of costs at that time. Um, regarding other gener generic disorders, uh, the cost of mortality can also vary quite a lot. Uh, but it's, uh, in, in the studies, it's usually between th three and nine euros per pig sold. Um, and the value of post weaning mortality is between two and four euros per pig. Um, <coughs> Then if you think about pre-weaning phase, um, uh, the costs of, or economic losses associated with pre-weaning mortality were usually between 12 and 23 euros per liter. Um, 
But this uh, costs were often reported for countries where the big left price tends to be quite high, for instance, Sweden. Uh, so that might affect the result. Um, there was also one study reporting that mortality of low, piglet, low, low birth rate piglets was about 1.4 euros per piglet. So if you take, in, take together prevening mortality and diarrhea as, as one group, then the, they total about 5 euros per produced piglet. So that's quite uh, a significant amount. Then going to uh, specific disease uh, or disorder categories. Um, respiratory diseases are very common in pigs, and they are also very much studied. For instance, um, mycoplasma, uh, PRRS, and some other studies. There are a lot of uh, studies. Some other diseases. There are, there are a lot of studies focusing on that kind of diseases. And uh, mycoplasma and uh, porcine respiratory disease complex, based on our results, they were, uh, the cost of that were about four euros plus minus a uh, couple of euros per pig on average. Uh, studies which were focusing using, uh, which were examining some intervention uh, to the dis disease, um, reported uh, slightly higher impacts than those which we are not examining interventions, and that reflects that, uh, that basically implies that if you have an intervention, then you can have a lower cost of disease. So the difference was about two and a half euros. Um, oh yeah, and by the way, um, in the studies, overall in the studies that we reviewed, about 45 of them were not examining any kind of intervention, and then the rest were examining one or several types of interventions to reduce the disease. And uh, they examined interventions such as um, vaccination, uh, different management practices, and so on. Antibiotics use. Okay, but let's go back to respiratory diseases. So, um, losses associated with uh, actinobacillus pleuropneumonia were, pleuropneumonia were also varying quite, varying quite a lot. But on average, in these studies, they were 6.4 euros per pig. And if you compare that, these numbers to uh, some other non-production diseases that have been studied a lot, um, losses associated with reproductive and, and respiratory disease syndrome and PMVS uh, were about 7 to 8 euros per pig, respectively. So um, also these other diseases are quite important. So, and given that uh, mycoplasma, for instance, is very common in pigs, it's very, it's, it has very important economic implications at the farm level. Mm. Okay, then going to enteric disorders. Um, Postweaning diarrhea is probably the most common and most important uh, uh, health problem in piglets. It's, uh, it's very common throughout the, world, throughout the world. And in the studies that we reviewed, on average, the cost of post weaning diarrhea or post weaning enteric diseases were between four and three and four euros per finished peak. But also there was uh, quite a lot of variation. So uh, in some studies it was just one euro, in some studies it was much more than 10 euros per piglet. Um, in in studies that we reviewed, uh, we found slightly lower costs for studies which were uh, focusing on, on UK than other countries. This might be due to some outlier issues. Uh, then to non-European studies compared to European studies and older studies were estimating lower costs than more recent studies. Also, as the approach that was used in its respective studies seemed to be some small effect. But in general, um, the way how it is analyzed did not seem to have uh, really much impact on results. Um, then uh, the cost of elatis were about four euros per pig. Also there, the range of variation was quite, quite huge. Um, and also in this case, all the studies, oh sorry, in this case, all the studies, studies reported higher costs than more recent studies. And there was, uh, 
tendency, but not really statistically significant to report lower costs for European than Australian studies. Um, then regarding um, issues related to feed, um, in North America they use a lot of antibiotics in feeds and that is an issue that has been studied there a lot, uh, maybe not so much in, in Europe. <coughs> Uh, but in those studies, they have found that uh, the benefits associated with uh, use of growth promoters in feed were about four euros per pig. Um, and that is also showing that, uh, that, is, that, that health issues related to feeding and digestion can be quite important. There's also one uh, European study focusing on the costs of excessive, sorry, American study focusing on the costs of excessive use of antibiotics in pigs. And there they has estimated that excessive use of antibiotics was costing about five euros per pig. So it, is, it can be also econ economically harmful to use too much antibiotics. Okay. Uh, next we will uh, have a look at the locomotory diseases. And more specifically lameness in pigs. This is very important issue, but it has not actually been studied so much econ in, from economic perspective. But the studies that we found uh, indicated that uh, the cost of lameness in finishing pigs was about 35 euros per lame pig, which is quite a lot if you think about that the, that the value of a pig carcass is something like, let's say, 120 euros. Um, and also there, the range of uh, losses associated with lameness was quite huge, ranging from 12 to 67 euros, depending on what is causing the lameness. Um, and osteochondrosis was close to the average. Uh, in South, uh, lameness is also very important and it's very common. Uh, there's a meta analyst saying that about 9 to 15 percent of sows are removed from the herd because of locomotory disorders. And uh, so uh, it's uh, also in this sense, it's quite common. Um, for instance, there's a study from UK saying that prevalence of lameness in that study, in herd study, that in herd study in that research where it was about 4.3%. Uh, so lameness is quite uh, important and common. And the costs uh, associated with lameness were about 13.8 euros per house sow or about 145-180 euros per lame sow. Um, um, so if lameness takes place in a sow, uh, the cost for that individual pick in, in terms of uh, money can be quite huge. Um, then we move on to reproductive disorders uh, and uh, perhaps the most importantly mastitis mitis agalactia which is a severe form of periparturian dyscalactia syndrome cost in, our, in the studies that we looked at it cost about 10 euros per produced pig. Um, and the cost of mastitis in medium case, medium case was about 95 euros. Uh, these studies are a little bit difficult to compare to each other because they didn't provide information, enough information to be able to compare them. Um, also, uh, um, quite well known issue is that uh, there are stillborn piglets and the cost of the stillborn piglets was about 10 euros per piglet. And um, so, in, so fa farms could really benefit from, from reducing um, the number of stillborn piglets. Um, and then the cost of premature replacement because of uh, re re pro disorder, disorders or problems related to reproduction, uh, it was about uh, 150, 170 euros per sow, per replace, replace sow. So, so this is within the same magnitude as um, um, cost due to uh, lame sow. And obviously these two are 
uh, related to each other in the sense that uh, both uh, reproductive disorders and lameness can result in replacement of sow. And um, also, there's, uh, we found only one study analyzing overuse of antimicrobials in farrowing phase. And that study indicated that the cost of overuse of, anti of antimicrobials at farrowing was slightly over five euros per piglet. Then, uh, regarding other disorders, <coughs> um, we analyzed studies um, looking at tail biting and ear biting, well, actually only tail biting in piglets, in, pigs, in, in growing pigs. And uh, the cost of tail biting was about two euros per produce pig. pig. Uh, but the cost can vary quite a lot depending on what is the prevalence of tail biting. And an important reason for uh, these losses is uh, carcass condemnation, but there are also other like treatments and uh, use of enrichment materials. And also these costs can be much higher if uh, tail biting is prevalent, if the prevalence is high. Um, and finally, we looked at studies focusing on parasites, namely Ascaris zoom. And uh, that was a parasite which could uh, reduce uh, feed conversion ratio and reduce growth rates and carcass value and cause carcass condemnations. So similar effects which can occur also, for instance, in case of tail biting and many other disorders that I have mentioned so far. And the cost of para parasites in pigs were about seven euros per pig. So if, if, the, if, the, if parasites are a problem, then also they can uh, cause a quite substantial decrease in um, gross margin in piglet production. Especially nowadays when uh, piglet sector is not necessarily doing so well economically in, in many European countries. Um, finally, I, I would like to mention some management aspects. So there are also studies looking at uh, economic benefits related to different management aspects in pig production. For instance, there are a couple of studies looking at how education provided to animal caregivers uh, improves uh, or affects uh, economic, economic results of a farm. And there has been uh, some indications that it, has, it really has a positive effect. Also, there are studies looking at uh, how different technologies, for instance, this, this effect, disinfection of a compartment between patches of finishing pigs or different ventilation systems or, or, or different housing systems can affect uh, economic results of, of a pig farm. And in many cases, they can provide economic benefits. Also, the costs associated with improved housing are well known, although their um, Productivity effects are not so, so well known, at least in terms of economic analysis. Um, before finishing, I would like to also say a few words about uh, from the consumer, consumer's point of view. So previously, I have, I have uh, th talked about uh, how production diseases could affect farm economy, and the other way. The other important aspect is, of course, how, co how consumers feel about uh, production diseases and how they value disease. Actually, there are not studies in, uh, analyzing uh, what is consumer willingness to pay for reduced uh, farm and reducing production diseases. But there are studies, a lot of studies uh, looking at animal welfare issue, which is a little bit similar. And uh, here you can see a figure which indicates consumer willingness to pay for improved animal welfare in pigs and uh, in poultry. And as you can see, willingness to pay in pigs is uh, smaller than in laying hens and broilers. And, um, and for instance, uh, more educated, uh, younger, uh, and uh, female respondents in this type of studies usually value uh, animal welfare higher than those not having these characteristics. So for instance, if a company is produ producing specialty piglets, it might matter which kind of markets it is targeting. 
Mm. And also, um, also some other demographic variables are important if you think about how consumers really um, perceive or what, how consumers think about uh, animal welfare and production diseases. Okay, uh, so uh, to summarize uh, this presentation, um, there, there are a number of studies uh, reporting full cost of production diseases in pigs, um, but they are usually focused on certain specific diseases. So there are also in information gaps, and um, sometimes the studies are not really comparable. But we know that, for instance, respiratory diseases are quite important in terms of economy. Um, so, um, taken together, um, the cost of endemic diseases in pigs are probably somewhere between 30 and 40 euros per pig, but obviously the incidence and severity of, of diseases that are present, that matters a lot. The cost of respiratory diseases are probably, on average, between 4 and 7 euros per pig per disease. The cost of enteric diseases are probably somewhere between three and five or three euros and six euros per pig per disease. And parasites can, that can be up to seven euros. Um, then regarding reproductive failures, um, the cost is probably somewhere between five and 10 euros per sow per year. And the cost of lameness, um, that might be up to 180 euros per lame sow, and likewise the cost of, um, of, of uh, sows that are replaced prematurely. And mastitis metis agalactia, that's about 10 euros per pig if it's a problem. And um, yeah, with that I would like to conclude. Thank you. Thank you very much for an interesting lecture, very synthetic uh, presentation, and uh, we will leave the questions uh, after the session. <laughs>